Okay, so welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about calculators. And if you're an engineer, you've got an engineering background, you're very familiar probably with calculators. And um, as years have gone by, calculators have been, I think, less and less important because of the advent of uh, personal computers and desktop computers where you can do a lot of calculations. But for many of us in the engineering world, you still might want to consider a calculator because it's portable and if you're doing stuff on the bench um, you can bring it with you You can do quick calculations without having to run back to your computer so we're going to talk about some of the options that are out there and look at some of the old calculators if you're familiar back in the 80s some of the old hp calculators we're going to look at those and some of the new ones like this new hp we've got here and some of the other alternatives you might have for calculating stuff and uh, just to, to get you thinking about what you might need for tools. So um, why would you need a calculator? Considering you can do stuff in, uh, on your personal computer, why would you need it? Well, like I mentioned, it's nice to have something, maybe if you're working on an electronics bench, have something right there where you can, can quickly calculate some numbers. Uh, and what I did is I kind of sat back and figured, what do I really need to calculate um, that I might need when I'm not at my computer? And I came up with a real quick list down here, you can see. Um, the big thing for me is conversions. Um, I need to convert like feet to meters, uh, temperatures, degrees to Fahrenheit, energy calculations, watts, kilowatts data like bytes to gigabytes and megabytes, uh, angles. Um, so a lot of conversion stuff. I'm always running around trying to convert stuff to different um, bases. And then also complex numbers. Complex numbers in the electrical engineering field are huge. You're always doing uh, complex numbers. And associated with that, vector calculations. You're always doing vector calculations. And again, in the electrical world, you're doing impedances, calculating those from inductance and capacitance, and figuring out total impedance, those kinds of things. Constantly we're doing that. And then if you're working on a scope, you're doing wavefo waveform calculations. You need to calculate frequencies and periods, RMS, and those kind of things. So um, those are just a few of the more commonly um, needed things. Now, as, as you probably know, if you've ever had a calculator, scientific calculator, there are a lot of functions on them that you may not need. Um, so, for example, if I need to graph something, if I need a serious graph, then what I will do is I'll probably go over like this to Excel, as much as I dislike Excel. You can really do some nice graphs once you figure out the, the challenges in Excel to doing graphs. You can, you can do some really nice large graphs and um, you, can, you can do also equations. You can put together equations, do these automatic calculations. And once you've got them, you can save them and you can come back to them. So for serious stuff, um, you know, like graphing and those kind of things, I tend to go to Excel or MATLAB or whatever computer software. But again, if you need quick stuff on your bench, you're probably going to want to think about getting a calculator. So um, what I've got here is I've got some simulators showing some of the older and new HP calculators. Here I've got a uh, an old HP 15C. If you were back in the 80s doing engineering, you're probably familiar with this one. This is one of my first calculators. And this is a real nice simulator you can get online for free, and it's identical to the HP 15C from back in the 80s. Now, if you would want to buy one of these today, you'd be spending about $700. Of course, there's the HP fanboys who have brought the prices up to insane levels. Um, so um, you can also get a free uh, HP 42S, which is in my view, a lot nicer than the 15C. And again, it's very expensive. You're going to, you're going to spend two or $300 for one of these. And um, here we've got an HP 35S. And the commonality between all these is they use RPN, which I personally like, 
but I can understand people who, who don't like it. It's, you know, it's what you're used to. Um, the HP 35S is what you can buy today for about $50. It's the HP, um, the latest, I believe the latest HP. Um, the problem with these HPs, in my view, is honestly, if you step back and, and remove the fact that maybe you're familiar with them, um, a lot of these take a lot of steps to do some very simple things. And they're really, if you, if you step back and look at it objectively, these things are really a pain. I mean, you know, I like HP calculators, but honestly, it is a pain to do some stuff. And we're going to look at these, the differences, uh, in a bit. But um, just so you keep in mind what you need and what you're willing to put up with. Now, also, if you're on a Windows 10 computer, you've got the built-in calculator. And in my view, this has got some very, very good features that these others don't have that you might want to consider. Again, it's not portable. Um, it's You have to go back to your computer to do these things, but it's got some benefits. And the other thing we're going to briefly discuss is making your own calculator. This is a calculator type uh, application I built in C Sharp years ago. And in this case, I can add vectors on this tab, and I can select different tabs, and it will do different calculations for me. And in this case, you don't have to look at a manual. It's fairly straightforward. If I want to add some rectangulars, I click on this. If I want to add polar, it will put it in magnitude and angle, or R and X. And then I can just, um, you know, enter numbers, 3, 4, and I want to add a, a, a vector of, 3 plus J4 to a vector of 5 plus J6. And I want to add, and it plots the two vectors and gives you a result. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, you really don't need a manual. You can write it. You can write this software so that it matches what's intuitively obvious to you. And then you can choose other things. Like, for example, if you're doing power calculations, you can do per unit. Put in MVA and voltage, and it will calculate base amps and base ohms. Um, but you can do whatever you want in here. So that's another option, but again, it's not portable. So regarding these older HP calculators, um, for example, let's start out with the, I believe the oldest, the HP 15C, and you can see it's got one number, all right? These newer ones have two numbers, like an X and a Y. Um, so that immediately makes this, in my view, this HP 15C, this older one, much less useful and much less intuitive because, as you recall, there exists memory locations for two numbers. Like if you're going to have a complex number, an X and a Y of a complex number, it's in here in the, in the calculator, but you can't see both. Here you can see both. So that immediately makes these quite a bit easier. So now let's say I want to add two vectors, as shown in this uh, application here. I want to add 3 plus J4 to 5 plus J6. Now, how would I do that on this 15C? Going to be kind of a challenge because there's only one number that can be displayed, and we've got four numbers here. So the first thing we need to do is 3, enter 4, and you need to tell the software that this is complex. So F and you hit I, and that means now it's complex. You can see the three part, but not the four. So now we're going to add five, enter six, and that's now complex. So I've got a three, four, and a five, six. And if I add it, I will get, we'll see it here, down the bottom, I've got eight plus J10 is the answer, and I've got the eight, so where's the 10? Well, in order to get the 10, you need to go to this function i in parentheses, and there's the 10, right? So it's a bit of a mess to try and figure that out. You know, you got to keep track of the i and the i in the parentheses, and you got to do all that in the right form. So clearly, you got to look at the manual to understand this, and you're probably going to forget this after a few weeks. So um, it's a bit easier over here in the... Um, uh, the newer 42S and the new S, which is the 35S. Because here you've got, you can see the R and the X. So in this case, you do 3, 
enter four and you see this complex up here you have to hit the yellow button and tell it it's complex and now you've got three plus i four all right now we can do five enter six tell it it's complex and you've got five plus i six and we can add them and you get 8 plus I 10, which is the correct answer. So a bit easier. Now, if you want to convert that to polar, how are you going to convert that to polar? Well, you've got to go into this convert. So yellow button convert. And you can see you now get a menu and you can select polar. And it's 12.8 at an angle of 51, which is down here, you can see it's correct, 12.8 at 51. However, it still gives you the I, not the not a theta. So again, it's it's confusing, all right? But you can do it. Now, a lot of people who, you know, there of course there are these H, the HP fanboys who are going to say, well, I figured out the 12 steps, and they're, they're, they've become, over the years, kind of intuitive to me. Therefore, it's awesome. Well, for the average person, no, it's not awesome. It's Honestly, it's a bit of a pain compared to what it could be. So um, you got to be thinking, is this what you really want? Now, the HP 35S, which is the one you can buy now uh, for about $50, it's the one that's readily available, as opposed to these, which are in the two to $700 range. So to calculate the addition of these two vectors, 3 plus j4 and 5 plus j6, you would go 3, i4, enter, and you can see it's got 3 plus i4, and then 5, i6, and then plus, and you can see it's 8 plus i10, which is correct. Now, the challenge comes when you need to convert this to polar. To do it, you do the counterintuitive, hit the yellow button, go to display, scroll down, and the very last option, number 10, is R at angle of theta. This is polar display. So we hit that, and we now have a very confusing answer, which is the correct answer is 12.8 at an angle of 51.3 degrees. We get 1.28062E1. So it's correct, but you got to multiply. It's 12.8. And this is a theta, not an 8, at an angle of 5.1. Well, wait a minute. It's off by 10. Well, you can see this little arrow. You have to hit the right arrow key, and now you can see it's multiplied times 10. So very confusing, uh, counterintuitive, and of course, you're going to have to read the manual to figure all this out. So you're going to forget it, and you're going to have to go back to the manual. You know, you got to ask yourself, do you really want a calculator <laughs> or do you want to do something, you know, make your own? Now, um, the one thing that I want to mention about this Windows built-in calculator, again, I do a lot of conversions. I'm always trying to convert different things to different other bases. And this Windows calculator is really pretty wonderful in that um, realm. So what you can do is you can select either a standard, a scientific, a programmer, or a date calculation. Again, date, date calculation is good, too, if you want to, you know, how many days, how many years between two dates. Very useful. Um, but anyway, you can convert currencies, volumes, length, weight and mass, temperatures, uh, energy, area, speed, time, power, data, pressure, and angle. So it's got a ton of really good... Um, conversions that, of course, these don't have. They've only got a very few of them. So if you need conversions, this thing is pretty wonderful. Now you can go to uh, select degrees, radians, or grads. Um, you can do fixed or engineering notation. Uh, you can do trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, hyperbolic, secant. And then you can go to the second, which is arcs, arc sine and arc cosine. And then you can also do the uh, cube roots. Um, you got s squares, square roots. Unfortunately, this is has got a weird square root. It's got a 2 with a square root. And then x to the y, logs. 
So you can do quite a bit. The problem is you can't do complex numbers with this. So, you know, this is, is reasonable for complex numbers, albeit, albeit difficult. And this, you can't even do complex numbers. So, so anyway, at the end of the day, for me personally, it comes down to, uh, I, I really think that HP has been out of the uh, calculator market. They haven't been a serious contender in calculators for decades. I think I wouldn't even give them a second, a second glance now. I think they're just, compared to what else you can get, I don't think I'd even consider them. So um, what's available? Um, personally, I think one of the best ones out there, and actually it ends up being one of the least expensive, is this Casio. And I think I'm going to do another video kind of going through it and talking about the functionality. But really, in terms of intuitive um, design and usefulness, this really is a nice calculator. Um, so anyway, I'll, I think I'll do another video to show the functionality and how intuitive it is for pretty much, um, you know, the kind of stuff that I personally uh, tend to do. So anyway, I hope you'll join me in uh, part two and hope this helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.